Good morning, good morning, and hello, and welcome to the Beverly Fells Jones Show. I am an author, speaker, seminar leader, uh, mother, grandmother, <laughs> I just do a lot of things, gardener, and I am so happy that you are here with me today. I really appreciate the fact that you took the time to listen in. So hopefully, I will be interesting enough that you will stay with me for the entire podcast. Today is really cloudy out. It is one of those days where I'd really rather stay in bed. (laughs) And just snuggle up with a good book. Well, many times when we think of something that we would love to do and we visualize that thing that we love or we desire, eventually it happens. It comes into our life. This past week, I was talking with a friend of mine and I had become disheartened, disheartened, well, unenchanted, whatever the word is I'm trying to find, but I was not happy any longer with the coffee that I was making. I've tried different coffee grinds, grind, you know, ground it up really almost powdery. I've tried different flavors, I've tried uh, different manufacturers. I've tried, you know, just all kinds of things. But I wasn't really being satisfied with my coffee. I have one of those pod type coffee machines in my bedroom so that when I'm getting dressed in the morning, I can just pop it in and make a cup of coffee while I'm dressing and putting on makeup and that kind of thing. Well, that's fine for every so often and, you know, getting things done. Well, when I'm at home and I want to make multiple cups of coffee, I have a large French press. And I've been trying all these different brands of coffee and grinds, and but the flavor just wasn't doing well for me. So I just said, okay, I'm going to go get myself a coffee pot. But I really didn't want a drip coffee pot, you know, kind of like the Mr. Coffees and the Hamilton Beaches and, and that kind of thing. I said, I want a percolator. Now, some of you have never seen a percolator. You've never really work with one, but a percolator, as the water boils, it goes up a tube, and then it comes down over the container that contains the coffee, and it continues percolating, and so that water goes through that coffee multiple times. See, what I have found is that when I am camping, I have a Mr. Coffee four cupper, and I've found that I can make up a pot and then pour more water over the top and make another pot of coffee. Not all the coffee is coming through. So I said, you know, but I went to my little cheap store, Big Lots, and picked up a, a, a four cup, no, it was an eight cup coffee maker, but I wanted a percolator, and I kept you know, even before I bought the coffee pot, I was thinking percolator. And so when I was looking for the coffee pot at Nebraska Furniture Mart, at Big Lots, at Walmart, I was looking, but none of them had a percolator type pot. But visually, I visualized it. I thought about it. I thought about what a wonderful pot of coffee a percolator makes. I have a stovetop kind of percolator in my camper, but I didn't want the cold stove one. I wanted the electric one. So I picked up the coffee pot at Big Lots, 
and then I came home, I was on my phone, and got on Facebook, and clicked on Marketplace, and guess what popped up? A percolator. And I went, really? And I just kind of, oh, whenever this happens, you know, it's not, for me, it's not a coincidence. It's, I say thank you. I thank you to the Creator for putting that in my bubble. I visualized it. I thought about what a per- what coffee would taste like having a percolator. So I went and got the percolator to pot and and brought it home and cleaned it out. You know, it was already clean, but I cleaned it again. And I made a pot of coffee using the same measurement that I was using in the French press mistake. The coffee was strong. So instead of pouring out and starting all, I just added water to my coffee cup and the strength was better. And so today when I made the coffee, I used less measurement and the coffee was perfect and it was strong and enough and it was flavorful and I knew that my idea of that percolator was right and I took the other coffee pot back to Big Lots. I had never opened it because when I got home I found the percolator so I was really happy and the percolator is used but and it was less expensive (laughs) than that other one so I'm now happy But what's that got to do with today's conversation? Well, it's about the idea that you make your own reality. And I've been doing the Manifesting Napoleon Hill. And now I'm going to start talking about the other person I sometimes talk about when I'm dealing with Napoleon Hill because they're thought processes are similar, not exactly the same. Napoleon Hill believed in the subconscious mind and getting the subconscious mind on board on what you desire. But Neville Lancelot Goddard talked about imagining, visualizing. So now I'm going to start bringing in Neville. It's always been my plan to bring in Neville. But now it's time. And you go, why is it time now? It's now time because I went into meditation, asked the question, and this whole thing with the coffee pot came up, and there's a few other things that happened, and it's time to talk about Neville. But in order to talk about Neville, just like I did with Napoleon Hill, I need you to know who Neville Goddard is. Well, Neville Lancelot Goddard was born on February the 19th, 1905 in St. Michael Barbados in British Columbia, the British West Indies to a European family. Now, he, you know, he wasn't all that famous initially, and he wasn't raised to, to be this philosopher. But my goodness, he became the most important, influential, new thought voice in the 20th century. His articles... Sometimes they're hard to understand, and sometimes you go, huh? But his very, the core of his teachings, the core of his teachings were very spiritual, and I want to say spot on in helping you visualize and make your desires come true. So we've had the secret, and the secret told you a little bit. And then, you know, I do Jose Silva, which taught me some more things, which we will talk about him at some time this year. 
But the idea is, when you did The Secret or watched the movie The Secret or read the book The Secret, it left out some of the very important pieces. And over the the videos and these podcasts, I've shared the information with you. But each time you talk and you learn about a new person, like a new spiritual leader, a new thought person, well, what happens is they have their own method. Napoleon Hill has his method. Neville Goddard has his method. Joseph Murphy has his method. They each have a method, but they're all steeped in the same philosophy, just told a little different. On the internet, you can find Neville Goddard's lectures. I have over 275 of them in PDF form. There are recordings of him. They're, they are kind of scratchy and just kind of hard to listen to sometimes. Sometimes you, you know, because back then, let's say the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, you know, recording isn't like it is today, right? I'm sitting here on my computer talking to you with a headset. And so the recording is good. But back then, it was rather difficult. But he was very, uh, he was very intellectual. He was charismatic. Not in the sense of the charismatic people we are today, but when you listen to him and you heard him, there was very little that you wouldn't believe. And he wrote books and he just caught, and he did signed at Neville and he became a really great speaker through the 1930s and 1972 he was self-educated he he looked at the idea of visioning and your imagination as everything that you need you know I've already talked about the the words from your mouth, the thoughts that you think are very powerful. And he brought it home very strongly. He believed that everything you see and experience, including other people, is the result of your own thoughts and emotional states. And I think of it as this, I create my own world. I create my universe. I create what happens to me based on my thinking, based on how I view the world and how you view the world will make a difference in what your world becomes. If you believe you're not good enough, you're not. If you believe that you are good enough to achieve things, you will. There have been times when I've had to deal with my own demons, my own thought processes of, am I good enough? Am I, can I explain things well enough that I have an impact on you, the listener, that will help you make the changes that you desire And that you listen and you hear and you believe to the point that you will make that change and at least experiment with what I talk about. Neville Goddard had that charisma that allowed people to listen to him. I mean, he filled auditoriums. Now, sometimes I've haven't been able to find how he filled his auditoriums. How did he get people to listen to him? Right? How is it that this happens? I truly believe, you know, YouTube is fine and 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 podcasts are fine. 
but I seem to get something from the energy when I am in front of that person and I'm in their presence and talking to them. And maybe part of it is because I know that I could have an opportunity possibly to talk to them and get some insight into them and who they are. So Neville believed each of us dreams into existence an infinite number of realities and outcomes. So when you realize what Neville taught, just as I have realized it, and what he believed was that each of us is a branch of the Creator clothed in human form. And we have limitless opportunities and possibilities in our life. Just popped into my head a video that I saw. And that video just showed a kid on a basketball court. And all these basketballs are bouncing. Those basketballs represented all the possibilities of him taking the ball, picking it up. He could throw it to the basket. He could throw it in the street. He could throw it to another person. There's all these possibilities. And until he picked up a ball with the intention of whatever he was going to do with it, so in this case, throw it into the basket, once he picked up the ball and did that, all the other balls disappeared because all the possibilities disappeared once he made a decision. The same way with you, there are many possibilities in your life. It's like, okay, I'm sitting here now and I'll finish this podcast. I can go make more coffee, which I probably will do. I can decide that I'm going to start planting my seeds for my garden. I can go to the library and do some research. I can go um, to the senior center. I can go for a walk. I can pick up a book and read. I can't. So you understand what I'm saying? There is multiple possibilities of what I can do. I'm not locked into one thing, and neither are you. Neville, his ideas influenced a lot of people. His teachings were considered mystical, and I can understand that because he used the Bible, and he used the Bible as an analogy to the way our lives work. He had a belief that the Bible was there to show us how to live. And he used it in such a way that, yes, sometimes I was not quite sure and I had to go back and read it several times. Now, Neville studied the Hebrew scriptures, the Kabbalah, which is also within the Hebrew, plus the the New Testament. And he studied with an Egyptian-born rabbi named Abdullah. And he studied with them for quite some time. So one of the things that, and he tells this story, and so I'm going to read this. Neville said that his first understanding of the power of creative thought came while he was living in a rented room on Manhattan's Upper West Side during the winter of 1933. The young man was depressed. His theatrical career had stalled and his pockets were empty. After 12 years in America, I was a failure in my own eyes. I was in the theater and made money one year and one month and spent it the next month. The 28-year-old ate to spend Christmas 
with his family in Barbados, but he couldn't afford to travel. So he's broke. He's he's working. I mean, he's dancing and he's in the theater, but he had to take side jobs as a waiter. We've all heard this or, you know, or as an elevator guy, because back then there was somebody in the elevator that operated the up and down of the elevator. They weren't automatic. So he was essentially poor. And Abdallah told him, live as though you are there, and that you shall be. Live as though you are there, and that you shall be. And I've mentioned in other podcasts and in the YouTube channel, believe that it is real. Believe that it is already done, that that you you want in your life. So this is another way of saying it. Live as though you are theirs. For him, that was Barbados with his family. And and when you do that, it shall be, right? That you shall be. So he says, wandering the streets of New York, Neville thought from his aim, as he would later urge his listeners and adopted the feeling that he was really and truly at home on his native island. He says, Abdullah taught me the importance of remaining faithful to an idea and not compromising. I wavered, but he remained faithful in the assumption that I was in Barbados and had traveled first class. So this is another thing. So. Neville was wavering, but he still put himself as though he was home and tried to have the feeling of reality. But the other piece was Abdullah was doing it for him also. Abdullah was visualizing that he was at home with his family and he traveled first class. He added a little piece to it. So I'll go back to the idea that when two or more people or two or more believers are together and they are in unison in thought, it is amplifying the capability and the creativeness of what you desire. So if you have someone that you truly trust, somebody that really loves you, who is not jealous of you, who does not envy you, but someone you really want to work with. And I have, there's three of us that get together right now in my circle to do this when we really want to create. But having somebody else visualize for you is powerful. So he goes on to say, one December morning, before the last ship was to depart New York that year for Barbados, Neville received a letter from a long out-of-touch brother, and it was $50 and a ticket to sail. His experiment, it seemed, had worked. Now, understand, he didn't write home for help. He was too proud for that. He didn't say, oh, come on, brothers, please help me, family, because he was from a big family. No, he had that wish. He believed the wish fulfilled of being home with his family, and Abdullah did it for him also, and it showed up. When I do the class, the Think and Grow Rich Master Class, our very first exercise before we get into the book, in the workbook, I put in an initial chapter of believing and doing an exercise similar to this to help you to begin to believe in the possibility of your imagination creating your life for you and that you get an answer to that request, just as Neville got an answer to his request. It doesn't say how long he did this, right? He just knew he wanted to spend 
Christmas with his family. Now, he could have said this in November. He could have said this in October. Um, the, you know, back then it took a while the, the ships from New York to get to Barbados. They're not as, weren't as quick and as fast as today's ships are. And there was no flying. That was prohibitive back then. So Neville discovered what became the pinnacle of his philosophy. His philosophy. And it was that you had to assume the feeling that your goal has already been obtained. Neville has you... uh, um, Napoleon Hill has you repeat your affirmation of how much money you want to make, how you're going to make it, when is it going to be done, and 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 visualize getting that done. And then I added the level of going into meditation and visualizing it complete. What would it be like? The key that Neville has taught is that feeling is the secret. I'm going to say that again. Feeling is the secret. You can go back and look at my podcast called The Book of Thomas. And again, within the Book of Thomas associated with Matthew. It talks about feeling, feeling it real, feeling that it's done, feeling that it is complete, feeling that you are capable, feeling in the present sense, not in the future. Because as long as you continue to think of something as in the future, it won't show up. And then you need to do the things that will allow that future to become present. You begin the process and spirit will begin to give you the next step, the next step, the next step, and the next step. As I said earlier, I was given the feeling that it was time to manifest Neville Goddard. And it is time, because I've been talking about him a little bit and th- th- on different podcasts, and I've kept saying I need to bring him in and talk more about what he said and bring in his teachings along with Napoleon Hill so that you can bring all these things together and manifest the life you want. Bringing all this into your life. Now, his first book, it was called At Your Command. And it was the first one that I read. And it was truly, for me, very powerful. Because... It gave me some thoughts and ideas that I never even considered. And he said, this book contains the very essence of the principle of expression. Had I cared to, I could have expanded it into a book of several hundred pages But such expansion would have defeated the purpose of this book. Commands to be effective must be short and to the point. The greatest command ever recorded is found in the few simple words, And God said, Let there be light. In keeping with this principle, I now give you, the reader, in these few pages, the truth as it was re- revealed to me. And it was signed by Neville. This, in a PDF form, 
is 14 pages. So it is not long. And I'm going to share one thing with you before I go. And many people, I've heard people say this and I've talked about this before. And I've just, you know, and I and it irks me. Because when I hear people say this, um, I can hear in their voice and in the way they stand and, and in the expression on their face, they don't really believe it. They're just saying words and repeating words that they heard. And most of the time, this was words that they heard in church. But they don't really know the meaning behind it. And they don't really understand the science. Because I truly believe God gave us science. And everything has a purpose and a method and a formula. They don't understand it. They just know that, you know, they say it, and I've, I've watched people fail time after time after time, and even after I t- try. And sometimes, and you all know this, you try to talk to somebody, and they go, well, pastor said, yeah, pastor said, but did pastor tell you this? No, pastor would have told me that if it was necessary. Well, sometimes pastor didn't have the time to tell you everything. He just got you started. So you, okay. So I said, I'm going to give you this. So here's, here's from at your command. Claim it as your own. And you will suddenly transform your world from the barren deserts of Egypt to the promised land of Canaan. Claim it as your own. So you by now understand what I'm talking about when people say, I named it and I claim it. But you named it and you're claiming it. But what did you name? And how did you define it? And does it have a purpose? And how many people will it help? Will it only help you or will it help your family? Will it help you be a better person and to help other people? How did you claim it as your own? So visualize what you desire. So I visualize as I spoke it. Now, here's the thing that I've realized is that there are many times when things show up in my life and I didn't sit down and just, okay, and do the visualization and visualize. No, it was, I spoke wanting that percolator. I visualized the percolator in my head. I visualized having a good cup of coffee with that percolator. That was it. Now, the percolator, I hadn't even thought about going on Amazon or going online and checking it out. Right? I hadn't even thought about that. I just decided that I needed to, I wanted this percolator. But I, like I said, I didn't research it. It was just there. But I went and got the coffee pot. Because, you know, it wasn't in the store. After I saw the percolator on uh, Facebook Marketplace, I went out and lo and behold, you could buy percolators online. You know, because I thought it was something they didn't make anymore. And they, they make it all the time. So there's more people than me that like percolators. But the idea was, Spirit brought it into my world at a price that I'm willing to pay. That's one of the things I'm always looking at. And it's like, hey, you already know. It's a price I'm willing to pay. And I don't want a really super expensive, you know, kind of thing. Because it's about how much money you keep, not how much money you make. (laughs) Anyway, 
But that is the beginnings of Neville Goddard. So next time I do Manifesting Neville Goddard, I'm going to start with his book, At Your Command, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that's powerful. I mean, it is so powerful. You've got to be with me the next time I do Neville Goddard because you will be empowered. You will be given new strength and new ideas on the empowerment that you have and what you were given by the Creator of you and me and this universe. Thank you for listening today. Please share the link to this show with your friends and family so that they can learn how to be the best that they can be. Visit my website at commandingyourlife.com and follow me on Facebook. Have any suggestions for the show? Just contact me by emailing Beverly at commandingyourlife.com. Be sure to join me on the next episode. As you have believed, let it be done to you, and it is so.